Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you today, and you can use this method to solve other similar optimization problems just like this one. So let's get into it. We're going to find two numbers whose difference is 100 and whose product is a minimum. This is a fairly common type of problem. Uh, really, when you're doing a problem like this, there's going to be kind of two different types of information that are given to you that you want to kind of figure out and write out in kind of mathematical terms before you start applying any calculus to the problem. So those two things that you need to figure out is what your goal or objective with the problem is, and then also what kind of restrictions are being given. So we know that what we're trying to do is make the product a minimum. So what that means is you want to think about if you're, you have two numbers, let's just say we have two numbers called X and Y, and we want to make their product a minimum. Well, the product of two numbers is what you get when you multiply those two numbers together. So if we take x times y, we want to make this as small as possible. So this is going to be an important function, which is called this f of x, y, where x and y are, are the two variables of the function. And this is the function that we want to minimize, or we're going to apply this just like other optimization problems to find the minimum value of this function. However, minimizing or optimizing in general, any multivariable function is usually going to be harder than optimizing a single variable function. So what we want to do is think about also what restrictions we've been given, and we can use that to turn this into a single variable function. So let's think about our restrictions here. We know that these two numbers need to have a difference of 100. So that tells us that our two numbers, X and Y, they need to be 100 away from each other. So that tells us the difference, which is just one number minus the other number, should be 100. So we know this is the function we're trying to minimize, and this is, in this case, the only restriction we have. It is possible you could have multiple restrictions, but this is the only one we have here. And when you have something like this, what you wanna do is think about how you can kind of rearrange your restriction so that you can figure out what one of your variable or a couple of your variables are in terms of the other ones. So what I mean by that is, let's take this restriction and solve for either X or Y, and then we can use that in this multivariable equation to get it to be a single variable function, and then we will be able to optimize that pretty easily. So if we just add y to both sides, that'll cancel there, and we'll have x equals 100 plus y. Okay, so now if we take this x value that we just figured out, and we plug it into this equation for x, what would that leave us with? Well, it would be 100 plus y, times y equals just f of y. So now our function only has y's in it. So y is the variable of our function. We got rid of our x by plugging in this x value in there. And now we have a single variable function and we know that we're trying to find the minimum of this. So now we can apply a lot of the techniques that I've done in some of my other videos about finding absolute maximum and minimum values of a function. Um, Really, when you're trying to do this, what we need to do is take the derivative of this function, and then we're going to use that derivative to figure out where our maximum and minimum values are. So before we take the derivative, what you want to think about is just kind of expanding this function out, making it a bit simpler. So if we multiply our y into our parentheses there, we're going to get 100y plus y squared equals f of y. And then when we want to find the critical numbers, which is the first step in finding minimum and maximum values, what you do is you take the derivative and you set it equal to zero. So the first step in that is finding the derivative of this function here. So the derivative of f, remember y is the variable here, so we can just simply apply power rule to find the derivative of this function. One, the derivative of 100y is just going to be 100. And then the derivative of y squared can just use power rule. So we'll bring the two down in front, lower the power by one. So this is our derivative. Now to find the critical numbers, what we want to do is set this equal to zero. So we can now just solve for y. So minus 100 from both sides. We'll get 
2y equals 100. I'm sorry, negative 100. And then we can divide both sides by 2. And we get y equals negative 50. So now we know y is negative 50 is the place where this function has a critical number. That could either be a minimum or a maximum. But let's take a, just a second to think about this function here. This is a polynomial, right? It is more specifically a quadratic function. We have a y squared term, a y term, and then a constant, which we could imagine is zero. So this is going to give us the, if you think about the shape of this function, it's going to be a parabola, right? And since the y squared term is positive, that tells us it's going to be a parabola that is facing upward. It's going to be shaped like this. We know that this function f of y is going to have this general kind of shape. So we would expect to have only one critical number, right? Only one possible maximum or minimum. And since we know that it's facing upward and going up towards infinity in both directions, we know that that one single critical number must be a minimum. So we've just figured out that that minimum occurs where y equals negative 50. But remember, we're looking for two numbers here. We found that one of our numbers must be negative 50. The other number, we can now take this y and plug it back into our equation for x. So doing that will give us x equals 100 plus negative 50, which is just minus 50. So that tells us x equals 50. 50 and negative 50 are two numbers whose difference is 100 and whose product is a minimum. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'm going to be having lots more optimization problems this week, so be sure to check back for those.